When we are done in QGIS, we go back to Mapbox and I will show you how everything is put together up already and it's just faster to show you here. So the first thing is when we start from the bottom, from the most bottom layer, I have a background layer and you can actually turn on here uh, the, the select data for other layers to see the, the extent. So the background layer is really just this ocean. So everything that is not, yes, the world is round, you see. <laughs> so everything that is n where I don't have data is just water. So this is just simply a nice blue background color. And then I am using the buffer, this the second buffer, and you can see here the various buffers. And I just give them again a slightly paler blue. And then uh, you get this, this buffer effect where it looks like the ocean is getting deeper. Then we have the uh, the landmass layer, which is really just, just a background. It is not visible in this map view because the biomes layer overlays it exactly. But if you switch off the biomes layer, for example, to create a political map where biomes aren't visible, but only uh, countries, only realms, then the background layer will provide this, this white background so that you don't have the, the blue ocean behind it. Let me show you very quickly what I mean. I can turn the visibility of this off and then you see that everything becomes white. And then when you turn on this, this realms overlay layer, for example, and you see this this effect and it's just for beauty it is more beautiful in my opinion to have this a little bit more pale than uh, than having the this two strong colors there so after the landmass this is now the background and then our main layer is the the biomes layer and here we use the fill color by data condition option of Mapbox. And then we just go through all the various options and basically say, if the biome property is this, then we want this color, this color, and so on. And for all the various biomes, we set a color that, that we like. And you can even bring some of them together for uh, for example, in this map here, I don't make a difference between cold desert and hot desert. So they have the same color for my map. On your map, you might want to have it differently, but all this you have. And I have set the opacity of this layer to 0 0.5 again to let the landmass, the white layer shine through a little bit. This is just a trick to make the colors a little bit more pale. Then we go to the rivers layer, and this is the first layer where we play around with the options a little bit. You see here that rivers are actually not visible um, at a zoom of 3 and 7. The rivers are actually not visible, they are not shown, and then they, they just fade in. You don't even see it, which is exactly the effect. If you look here very closely, you can see how the rivers are slowly coming and becoming visible. And I use this a lot to blend out the details because you don't want to see everything at every layer. It would just make the map too messy. Width of the river layers here so that they are not too thin and not too thick depending on the, on the le level. So when you zoom in really closely, you see I haven't cleaned up everything yet. So if you zoom in closely, they actually get some size. They are not just thin. And you could use a width property here, for example. I'm not yet using that to make various different rivers uh, different sizes. So there can be smaller rivers and wider rivers. I plan this, but I haven't done it yet. So that is the that is the rivers layer, and there's a separate layer using the same data source actually. So this is this is also the rivers data source, as you can see here. These are the river lines. And these are the river labels. And I'm using the same data source, but this time I'm not using the line type, but the symbol type. And I can use that to, uh, to style. I can use that to use the data field 
river where the name of the river is stored and and just write that on the liver and it will nicely follow the line of this river and every few units it will put there the the name of the river so it becomes visible and mapbox will take care of turning it around and so on so that it's always nicely visible again i play with the size here so that it it just looks nice okay i do have a lakes layer but i have turned it off because i have lakes as well in in the biomes here so i'm not using this lakes layer but i can i can turn it on to uh, to show the the lakes as well um, i've not turned it on because i do have a deep lake here where i actually use sorry not the biomes layer the uh, the ocean layer so i quite like the effect that i actually do have deep spots in uh, in my lakes but if you prefer to have your lakes a different shade of blue then you could just turn on this lakes layer and now it gets more interesting the more complicated uh, parts are this this is my uh, my routes layer where i have all the different roads i have different types of roads different sizes of roads and i also want to have some interesting roads like these and this is just made by having different layers with different colors different settings and widths. and you see here that even these minor roads fade out already and are not visible anymore because they are on their own layer so at this zoom level i don't see all the minor roads i see only the major roads here and then i use a row, uh, an edge and these are the uh, the land layers which use different colors depending on uh, the type there are trails roads sea routes and highways and this gives me different types of roads and they are all with with this black edge just to make them stand out more so that's how you get this effect and my uh, for my sea lanes my my sea trade lanes i also use you can see here uh, the effect of making it a dash array so that it's it's like this because it's not actually a road there's nothing there it's just a common way that ships travel and again i have a separate layer for the names i don't have names for minor roads but there are this this road for example this is the imperial high road it's a you know very solid road built on orders of the emperor himself etc and there are some other roads as well uh, which actually have names not many yet i'm still building this world but here for example is, is another road which actually has a name so this is the same as for the rivers just an overlay then i have this points of interests layer mm, asgas generator creates a number of these volcanoes and hot springs and and bridges and so on and i'm also using the same layer for adding more more objects into the map so i'm i'm adding a number of of inns for example along my my main roads and i use this layer just to put them on the map and i'm using here uh, various icons and just by you know different but by, by the type i just use different icons here uh, if you import icons into mapbox the default icons and i think it's basically intended to be like this are 15 by 15 in size so you want to rescale your icons even though they are svg uh, even though they are svg you want to rescale your icons to to 15 by 15 this will give you the best effect and then you can just position them like this and also add uh, a text you see that here you can even have functions in the text field so i take out the type and combine it with a dot and the name so i get this uh, this at the moment it's probably not the final result that i want but it will tell you both what it is and and what the name is maybe i will be removing the type in the future because it's visible from the icon but as you see i haven't yet found perfect icons for everything yet if somebody has an svg icon that symbolizes a medieval roadside inn please let me know in the comments i would be very happy to use it okay now we go to the next layer group that is the towns and you see again it's made up of many different layers 
my villages are really just dots on the map with a separate layer for the name. So I have the, the dot and the name and that's all. Everything else, like these fields surrounding it, is on a different layer, on the biomes layer. And for the cities, I'm doing things a little bit more interesting. So I have the, the towns here, which are just you know, dots with a, a stroke around it, so with a black edge. But I use, uh, for the radius, I use a condition. So if it is a capital, it will be bigger than, than not. And also I use a formula here that takes the square root of the population so that bigger cities have bigger dots on the map. So that you can see by the size of the dot on the map if the city is important, either because it's a capital or because it is larger. And this gives you a nice visual feedback of which which cities or towns are, are large and which are small. So this is a pretty large one. This is a pretty large one. This is a pretty small one. This is a pretty small one. All this information you have just by scaling this size. Here's something that is for a future tutorial because I'm, I'm not done figuring this out yet, but I have started to create street maps as well so that you can really zoom down to the street level. And this is the layer that includes these details, uh, the buildings, the walls, and the labels. Mm, and, and I don't have this yet for, I have it for two cities right now, and I'm not happy with it completely. So I'm still working on it, and I will be making the tutorial on it when, when I'm happy with it. But what you notice here is that I, that you can also fade out as you zoom in. So as you zoom in, this dot representing the city fades out and instead the the buildings appear. So this is how you transition from one way of showing something on the map to a different way. And then of course I have again uh, a labels layer which shows the the names uh, scaling scaling up and down so that they are always nice and present. The next layer is the the realm borders that uh, I showed you how to make so they are not here at the coastline but on the land between the different different countries there are these nice borders and then I have this this overlay which I showed already so if you can turn if you turn this on then you get this nice political map with um, with the realm labels I I always have the realm labels enabled but you could turn them on and off as well if you really want without the without the country names and then we go higher and we come to the contours which I've also just showed you how to make and this is two layers this is the line itself and then the labels so that you get this effect let's go to some mountains where it's visible so that you get this effect you know the 1900 the 2000 line so here here it goes up into the really into the mountains and here are of course your volcanoes and springs and so on so this is the contour layer then the same as i have for the countries i also have uh, for the cultures so here's my my cultures overlay not so beautiful because i I still have the biomes turned on. It looks nicer, especially in this area. If you turn the biomes off, there you go, better. This actually doesn't have a culture because there are just so few people living in, in these mountains. Actually, in, in many of the cells, the population is zero. And uh, again, with the labels as well. And I have the same for for religions as well. For the religions as well, you can turn on and off the um, the layers here to get that overlay. And then I have this overlay, mm, this overlay, which is which seems to be just black, and and that's intentional because I use this to highlight something. So if on uh, if on the atlas you zoom in, let me show this very fast. So if on the atlas 
you zoom into some realm, then it will show you this map with that realm highlighted. And this effect is created actually not by highlighting this realm, but by, by shadowing over everything else. And if you go to the, the data here, you can see that here are actually different overlays. And I can turn them on and off. And that's how it's made. So there is, there is, uh, it's not visible really, but this, this green blob here is made up of, uh, of many different overlays and I can selectively turn them, on, turn them on and off so that I can remove uh, this, this gray shadow selectively from different areas of the map. And the, the widget for using that I will be showing in the next tutorial, but this is how it's done to, to highlight this. So everything is covered in shadow and then I cut out this part and, and basically say, don't, don't show this. And that's how you highlight something on the map. That's why I have this, this overlay layer here, but by default it's hidden. And that's how you bring all of the stuff that we did in, in QGIS into this map box map and get this, this very nice, very nice interactive map. And just as a, a last small detail, if you didn't know, uh, this map actually rotates and it even has this small 3D effect where you can, where you can go in like this and, and you can really find the best way to show whatever region you want to show in the context that you want to show it. So just to show you the end result of all our work, this is the, the ocean buffer zones that we created. I'm now using the world map for, for the Dragonai world because here I have everything set up. And you can see here the, the ocean buffer zones that we just created. And if I zoom in to one of the places which are actually managed already, as you zoom in, all of this is set up in Mapbox with the techniques that I showed you. Then you see that villages start to appear. Many of the villages have names already. Here are the fields around the villages that, that you can see where you get an impression that you understand this is a very small village. This is a pretty large village with lots of fields around it. And there are actually contour lines, especially over here in the mountains, you can see that here it goes up pretty quickly. So this is this is 100 meters each each step. And all of these things are set up on the map. And it gives you a really nice map with a lot of information with many things to zoom in and to look around and a good impression of the scale of the map. And all the details that uh, that you are that you can see with the fields around. Uh, I also added fields around the towns and cities because they have agriculture as well, right? So all these things are what we tackled in this part of the tutorial. And in the next part, I will start to explain how all this around all this atlas is built and how you can integrate the map box map that we created and make it an interactive map on a fantasy Wikipedia. See you soon.